Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I'm your host, Andrew, and today I have a story straight out of the Wild West for all of you. Everyone knows the grave with the name Lester Moore, yet very few of us know who Lester Moore is. So on today's episode of Legends of the American West, we're going to be talking about the man with the most recognizable headstone in the country. We start in the late 1870s in Tombstone, Arizona, where they had just established a brand new cemetery, now referred to as Boot Hill Cemetery or Boot Hill Graveyard. This is a reference to the people who died and were buried there with their boots on, mostly 19th century shootists. However, the burial service of Boot Hill Cemetery was short-lived as Tombstone would open up a brand new graveyard in the mid-1880s. There were a couple reasons why residents of Tombstone wanted to move their loved ones to this new cemetery instead of Boot Hill. Number one being that the reason why they built a new cemetery is Boot Hill was filled. There were no more grave sites. The second reason is clearly that the residents that were burying their loved ones didn't want to bury their loved ones next to somebody with not a lot of positive repute. This actually left some residents of Tombstone uprooting the plot that they had in Boot Hill Cemetery and moving it to the new cemetery that they just established. As a result, very few burials happened at Boot Hill after the year of 1884. It is important to note that Boot Hill Cemetery houses the bodies of up to 300 deceased people, including some members of the Cochise County Cowboys, with the names of Billy Clinton and Tom and Frank McClary. It is also the final resting place of our man of the hour, Lester Moore. We know very little about Mr. Moore, as he was not a very prominent figure, such as names like Holiday or Earp. What we lack in knowledge about Lester Moore, we more than make up for with the most iconic headstone in the United States and a story that could only come out of the Wild West. In the 1880s, Lester Moore was an employee of a Wells Fargo station in Naco, Arizona, near the United States and Mexican border. Enter a man named Hank Dunstan, who arrived at the station that day as a customer who was expecting a package. When he asked to get the package, Moore, who was working that day, went to retrieve it. As Lester Moore returned with the package and that package exchanging hands, it was visibly noticeable that the parcel that was given to Dunstan was harshly mangled and this rubbed Dunstan the wrong way. This led the two men into a heated conversation that quickly escalated into a bombastic argument to the point where both men reached for their guns. Apparently, Dunstan got to his first as he shot Moore four times. But even with four balls of lead in the Wells Fargo clerk's body, he did make one final delivery before his demise. Lester Moore did get one shot off in the skirmish, which landed directly in Dunstan's chest. This also led to Dunstan's death. And following Dunstan's death, Lester Moore followed. After the events that ensued in Naco that day, Moore's body was transported back to Tombstone, where he was given the United States' most recognizable epitaph. Here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a 44. No less, no more. And to add insult to injury, nobody knows where Hank Dunstan is buried. Now I come in with the fact-checking because I would not be doing my job 
if I didn't do so. There really isn't any evidence to suggest that Lester Moore or Hank Dunstan actually ever existed. Furthermore, Boot Hill Cemetery, at its current junction, is a tourist attraction. There are real people buried there, but many fictitious burials were put in place to promote foot traffic to the area. Hell, the original name of the cemetery isn't even Boot Hill. It didn't even get that name until the early part of the 1900s. Here is a side note that I did pick up on because I love the movie Tombstone and I obviously did my research here on Lester Moore and his headstone. As you see in the movie, the Earp Party arrives in Tombstone and Lester Moore's headstone is very much visible. It is basically foreshadowing the upcoming events in the movie and what the Earps are getting themselves into by going to Tombstone. However, with my extensive research, it is a dubious proposition at best to say that Lester Moore even existed. But everything that I did find about his demise happened in the 1880s and at the earliest 1880. With that being said, the Earp Party arrived in Tombstone in the movie and in actuality in late 1879 which means that they would not have saw his headstone as Lester Moore would have been very much alive. So I just thought that was a tidbit of information that everybody would like to indulge in with me. However, let's circle all the way back. Isn't the Wild West in all its mythology just that? A story? Did Lester Moore really exist? I don't know. But I do believe that's why we romanticize this period of time. It's the intoxicating feeling of getting to hear and tell stories of old. But I do have something that other historians have not touched on. I have an alleged video, yes, video recording of Lester Moore with four balls of lead in him right before he shot Hank Dunstan. I mean, I know I'm gonna get got. But I'm going to get mine more than I get got, though. Thank you, everyone, for getting this far into the video. That was a long overdue installment of Legends of the American West. But I hope this suffice and a little bit more of a niche story today. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed today's video or leave me a comment stating what you liked or tell me what I should do next. I have a Patreon that is linked down below and you can see it at the bottom of the screen. I take pride in being community funded. So if you'd like to help out with the content that you see here every Monday and Thursday, feel free to donate but feel no obligation to. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed as of late, but for those of you who have come across this video or this channel, maybe because you like stories of the Wild West, maybe you just like Old West content in general, or maybe you want to give me the Lester Moore treatment and give me one final delivery to shut me up. Think about hitting that subscribe button because you're a daisy if you do.